In this short video, we're going to learn about solving non-homogeneous systems of differential equations using the method of undetermined coefficients. So let's start with an example. The method that we're going to use is going to be very similar to the method of undetermined coefficients when we just had a single differential equation. So we'd like to solve this following system of equations and we see that we have a right-hand side function uh, which has constants, negative 8 and 3. So, as usual, we will start with the homogeneous equation and solve it. So we get our characteristic equation and find that we have two complex roots, which are conjugates of each other, lambda 1 equals i and lambda 2 equals negative i. So let's find the eigenvector corresponding to uh, uh, i. And we're going to go ahead and use our elementary row transformations. First thing I'm going to do is uh, I don't want to deal with the complex number in the first row and column. So I'll swap the first and second columns. And then I'd like to have, uh, I'd like to get rid of all these negative signs. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply the top and the bottom by negative 1. And then finally, I'm going to eliminate this 1 plus i in the second row. And I'm left with a row of zeros as we expect. And this tells me that the relationship between the x and y components is that x plus negative 1 plus i times y equals 0 and y is a free variable. So I'm going to actually choose uh, y to be the uh, essentially the conjugate of the multiplier there and that ensures that x has no imaginary part. So my first eigenvector is uh, 2 and then i plus 1. And if you remember, uh, the eigenvalues come in conju complex conjugate pairs, and their corresponding eigenvectors are conjugates of each other. So right away I can say that the second eigenvector will be the complex conjugate of the first eigenvector, and now I have both eigenvalues and both eigenvectors. So also remember that uh, as we have solved it, we would get a complex valued solution. So to get a real valued solution, we have a formula. Uh, so let's just recall that uh, when I talk about lambda 1 equals i, that means alpha equals 0, alpha being the real part. There is no real part. And beta is the coefficient on i. And so uh, I can plug that into the formula, which means that that formula had an e to the alpha t, uh, so e to the 0 would just be 1. So that will not appear in our formula. What we do need is the real part and the imaginary part of our first eigenvector. So to make it clear, we could break up our uh, eigenvector into the real part and then the coefficients on i. And so this new vector b1 is the real part, and the vector b2 is the imaginary part. And so uh, we have two parts to our solution then. We have b1 times cosine of beta t uh, minus b2 sine of beta t, and then b1 cosine of t, uh, beta t plus b2 sine of beta t. So since beta is 1, here we've got our complementary solution. Now for the particular solution, uh, the f vector is constant. It just has the negative 8 and 3. So we're going to assume that our particular solution is constant as well with components a and b. If it's constant, then our, the derivative, so x sub p prime, is going to be the 0 vector. So let's go ahead and substitute those terms then into the differential equation. 
In the place of uh, x prime, I put the zero vector. Still have the same coefficient matrix. And then my uh, x sub p just has the a sub b. And of course, I have to add the f vector, the negative 8, 3 vector. And then what I need to do is uh, go ahead and set that into an equation. It becomes a system of equations. And from that system of equations, I can solve for a and b. And now I've got my particular solution. Since I've got the complementary solution and I've got the particular solution, I can just add them together and that gives me my general solution. All right. So here's another example. Uh, this time our f vector uh, has a t in it, so it's a, a linear uh, component, 6t and then negative t plus 4. So we'll first have to work out the complementary solution. I've done that already. You get two distinct real eigenvalues, 2 and 7, and their corresponding eigenvectors are 1, negative 4, and 1, 1. So let's just focus on the particular solution. Again, since the components of my f vector have the form at plus b, then we're going to assume that we have a vector which is a constant vector plus another vector times t. So we'll take our derivative, which means we only get the coefficient vector from the t, and substitute it into our differential equation. So I have my x prime vector equals a times x. Now x, meaning x sub p, has both these vectors in it. And then, of course, I have to add the 6t and the negative 10t plus 4 vector, my f vector. So the way I want to look at this is I want to say that, oh, all of the coefficients on t should be equal from left and right hand side. And the coefficient, constant coefficients should equal each other from the left and the right hand side. So let's look at the t, coefficients of t. Well, there's no vector on the left hand side that's multiplied by t. So that's why I have the zero vector there. The only thing that gets multiplied by t here is I have, well, my coefficient matrix gets multiplied by the vector a2, b2, and that's times t. So I don't put the t, but I just say, oh, the matrix vector product is multiplied by t. And then for my f vector, I have a vector 6, negative 10. Those are the coefficients on t in that particular vector. So I get this matrix equation out of here. And I can rewrite that as a system of equations. I would have to uh, bring this 6, negative 10 to the other side of the equation. That's why I now have a negative 6 and a positive 10. And then just solve that system of equations. And that gives me a sub 2 equals negative 2, b sub 2 equals 6. So let's look at the constants now. On the left-hand side, I have the constant vector a2, b2. And now I know what a2 and b2 are, so I can make that substitution. And then I have the coefficient matrix times a1, b1. That's a constant. And then from the f vector, I have a 0 from the first component and a plus 4 from the second component. So let's go ahead and put in our values for a2 and b2. And then we can turn that into a system of equations. I would need to subtract the 0, 4 vector from each side. And when I do that, then my right hand side is negative 2 and 2. Multiply out the matrix times the vector there. And that's how I get 
my system of equations, and I can solve that by any method of your choice. You could use elimination, substitution, Kramer's rule, uh, Gaussian elimination, whatever you're comfortable with. And your uh, result is that a sub 1 is negative 4 sevenths, and b sub 1 is 10 sevenths. So now if I put that together, that would tell me what my particular solution is. I have all of the missing variables. And so I'll put that together with the complementary solution to get a general solution. So again, the a1 and the b1 have been replaced by the negative 4 sevenths and 10 sevenths. The a2 and the b2 have been replaced by negative 2 and 6.